This morning I got into my car, started my engine, and I noticed the charging system indicator was illuminated. The next thing I did was take a DC voltage measurement at the battery terminals while idling the engine and revving the engine. A reading in the 13.8 to 14.5 volt range would indicate the alternator was working properly to charge the battery, and a measurement well below would indicate the alternator is faulty. As you just saw, the DC voltage measurement was low. Now I'm not surprised the alternator stopped working because after all the car is close to 18 years old, has 142,000 miles, and the alternator is the original. I suspect the brushes that make contact with the rotor are no longer making contact. In this video I'll be showing you each step that I take to replace the alternator. At the end of this video I'll open up the old alternator to see if my suspicion was correct. Now the steps outlined in this video apply to Hyundai Sonata, 2002 to 2005, Kia Optima, 2002 to 2005, as well as other Kia and Hyundai vehicles using the V6 2.7 liter engine between the years of 2002 and 2005. The first thing we need to do is disconnect the battery negative cable. Because this is an older vehicle, you do not need to use an OBD port backup tool like you see right here. When the job is complete and the negative cable is reconnected, all you have to do is make sure all the accessories are turned off, start the engine and allow it to idle until it reaches normal operating temperature. Once it reaches normal operating temperature, you could drive the vehicle. Okay, now that the negative cable has been removed, you're going to have to go to the passenger side of the engine towards the firewall. Now the alternator is going to be removed and reinstalled through the opening you see right over here between the engine, the firewall, and the cruise control. To make the replacement as easy as possible, you're going to make sure everything is clear in that area. So you're going to unplug the connector on the cruise control, tuck it off to the side, and you can push the chassis ground wire off to the side. Now to show you as much as possible, I'm going to be removing the front right wheel so we can have a very clear view of the alternator. Let me jack up the car, place it on stands, and remove the front right wheel. Right here you can see the three bolts, the one at the top, one in the opening right here, and one straight back. The next thing you're going to do is release the drive belt or serpentine belt. And that's very simple, you just have to go to the auto tensioner, point it out right here, and you're going to use a 3 8 inch ratchet. You're going to insert it into the square opening at the end of the auto tensioner and you're going to push down on the ratchet handle until the belt is loosened and you can pull it over the pulley of the alternator. Be very careful when you release the tension that you do not pinch the top of your hand between the ratchet handle and the motor mount. With the front right wheel removed you can now see the alternator very clearly. The alternator is secured using two bolts, one larger at the bottom right and one smaller at the top left. You're also going to have to remove one harness by squeezing the connector and pulling outward and you're also going to have to unbolt the battery cable from the alternator. Right here you can see the plastic cover has been popped open and you can see the nut. You're going to have to undo that nut to remove the positive cable from the alternator. Right here you can see the cable has been completely undone from the alternator. The right side is the battery positive and the left side is the harness that you had to squeeze the connector on top in order to pull it out of the alternator. In order to give you a lot more room, you're going to have to remove this metal plate. You can see there's two cables that are connected to it. You do not have to release the cables from the plate, but you do have to remove the one bolt that's holding the metal plate to the engine block. And right here, you can see what the plate looks like after it's been unbolted. The next thing you're going to do is loosen the larger bolt on the alternator, the one you see right here. Normally, you would reach down from the engine compartment using a ratchet. But since I have the wheel off, I'm just going to reach straight in using an extension bar. You're going to loosen that bolt, but it's not necessary at this point to completely remove it. Next, you're going to loosen and completely remove the upper bolt on the alternator. Once you have that bolt removed, the entire alternator is going to want to drop down, but you're going to have to pull up on the alternator and towards the firewall to remove it. As you can see in this image, the mounting point has an opening that allows you to slide the alternator out with the bolt in place. Right here, the alternator has been completely removed from the mounting point, and the bolt has also been removed. In case you're wondering, the alternator will not fit through the opening. You're going to have to reach way down into the engine compartment and lift up on that alternator until you get it to go all the way up through the top. Now right here, you can see the area is nice and clear where the alternator was. 
you're going to take the new alternator and very carefully work it all the way down to where the old one was mounted. You're going to insert the larger pivot bolt first, ensuring that the square head of the bolt is seated properly on the alternator. Then you're going to install and tighten down securely the top bolt on the alternator. And right here you can see that the alternator is now installed. When you reinstall the belt, make sure the belt is exactly in position on the pulley that it's not hanging off. You also want to make sure the belt is not frayed, any part of it cracking, or if it feels really dry or glossy, then you're definitely going to want to swap that belt out. Okay, let me reconnect the negative cable to the battery, let it idle for a little bit, and see if everything is back to normal. And as you can see, we're now just a little lower than 14.5, so the battery is once again charging. The light is now off. Okay, let's take a look at the old alternator. Let's pop up the voltage regulator, and it came up very easily. Wow, what a mess. And you can see you have all this crud underneath. Now, I did have a little bit of an oil leak. I tightened the valve cover since. But it looks like the oil found its way in by the brushes and it mixed with the dust that's created from the brushes as they wear down. And if you look inside the voltage regulator, you can see the brushes are all the way in. So there is definitely not any contact being made with the slip rings on the rotor. And that's why power was not being generated. And guys, that is it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.